Shut up and sit down. Alright guys, this is Big Mech's Workshop and Paint Studio, I'm Dodge, and this week we are going to be painting a Lieutenant in Phobos armor from the new Shadow Spear set. As we are continuing to paint our way through the box of Shadow Spear stuff, and this week we're going to be painting this Marine in the Salamander's colour scheme. Unlike uh, other videos, this one's actually quite short, uh, as I didn't use as many colours as I thought I would need to. Um, so we've started with a black primer by Vallejo, as we usually do, and now we're going to use Warg Flesh as a base coat. I wanted to keep these coats really, really thin, uh, as I wanted to do some nice glazing on the armour, but uh, you can probably do this in two, three coats. You can see how thin that is there, but it's entirely up to you. Now I've got a nice base coat of Warg Flesh, we're going to use Warpstone Glow. We're going to cover about 75% of the armour in this, uh, this is going to be our base colour. And uh, I'm using a wet palette for this and a standard brush by Games Workshop, a uh, small layer. And basically just rubbing off all the paint off the brush almost and using what's left to just pull from the recesses to the highlighted areas. That's basically all glazing is. We will have a video on glazing coming out sooner or later. And uh, just to smooth that out a little bit, we're going to add a null oil wash which is really watered down as you can tell. I think it's about 70% water and we're going to cover all of the parts in that. Again I'm not drowning it in that, I'm sort of still using a glazing technique for its placement because it's going to add more of a filter. It's also going to put some black in the recesses but don't worry too much about that because we're going to finish this model off with a pin wash. After the null oil's done I'm going to go back to the warpstone glow and start working at about 50% of the way up the legs and the armor plates. That way what we've done is we've really darkened down the warg flesh in its recesses then we've got the warg flesh with that same filter over it and the warpstone glow. And as we're bringing it back up you can start to see those transitions uh, really take off there. Now I've not really thought about doing salamanders until recently as me and Andy are doing a small salamanders army for battle reports and yeah this box sets a, a part of that as well so we thought we'd just try out the salamanders paint scheme on this and see how that went. Now we're going to add some moot green to the warpstone glow, just to brighten it up a little bit more. And now we're on pretty much the top quarter of the armor plates. With this sort of color scheme, it's entirely up to you how how bright you're going to want it. All you do is you change the areas that you're painting and the ratios. So if you want it brighter, like this sort of color that I'm applying now, you just pour more on over a wider area and keep going up. Next is pure mute, mute green on its own. Mute green, sorry. Um, I believe I've switched to a different brush here. This is a Winsor Newton by the look of it. Uh, series 7. And that's because I'm working on the top 8th now, as we've done the top quarter. And just feathering those brighter colours in there. So glazing them in, and where it's a bit patchy, I just take everything off the brush and push the paint pigment further to the highlight areas. Now, as I don't want to drown or make any mistakes on this armor with the washers, we're going to use Model Air Metallics Black for the uh, metallic parts in between all the armor. Now, that's just because it looks like a gunmetal that's already had a wash on it, so that's going to save us adding the wash on, then we can highlight it later on. So it's a really good contrast color for metallics. After that, I'm going to use Model Air Metallic Gunmetal uh, for the other silvers. As I did want to separate these silvers, I didn't want all this green and then block silver. Um, again, as I say on all the other videos, you should definitely think about getting some model air metallic colours. They are really smooth and they apply very, very well. Next is a scale 75 colour called Tandalos Red or Tandilius Red. Um, I'm going to use that for the base coat on the skin. I do know. Well, I don't know too much about salamanders, but I do know they have rather dark skin. So we're not going to go any brighter than the Tandilos Red by scale 75. We're going to darken that down later on as well. So, the armor's pretty much done. We've started picking out the faces, and as we continue blocking in these colours, I'm going to use Corn Red for the what I can only describe as some form of battery pack because it does have a cable coming out of it and I believe it's connected to the goggles that it's got on as well 
So I've decided to do that red, and later on the goggles that I do are going to be the same colour as well. It just seems like he attaches that to his armour. Um, I don't know if it's actually part of the armour, uh, as we're not Space Marine players, and we're not, you know, we haven't got the information there. But uh, I do sort of like this character. Um, there's a lot of little details on him, and he's not too difficult to paint. Uh, Retributor armour we thought would be a very nice colour, it's a Games Workshop colour by the way for the skulls and sigils instead of going for bone um, something a bit more regal and the yellow the yellowish gold will complement the milk greens and all the other green palette we've got so we've got our reds, yellows and greens there and uh, it's starting to come to life a bit Now I'm going to use German Grey by Model Air to highlight the black. And again, this is a glazing technique. There's barely anything on that brush. And we're going to do lots and lots of layers, just bringing that up. If I wanted to, I could have used the airbrush for this and had it done in a few minutes. But I've been sticking to the brushes because, as we know as a channel, uh, not everyone's got an airbrush. So I'll show you how to do it with just a paintbrush. So all the shoulder pads and the gun that's been left black are all going to have that same layer of German grey. And once that's highlighted up, instead of giving it a wash, we're going to use DK Black. No, yeah, DK Black by Scale 75. Uh, not quite as a wash, we're just going to glaze that down. We did this in the Flesh Terrors video that came out recently as well. Uh, I can't come up with many other ways of highlighting grey, to be honest, or blacks. So it's a bit of a repeat there, uh, it's another reason this video is short, I just shortened it down to the basics for those. And um, now we we did all the metallics earlier, and now we're going to give the gun metallics a null oil, because they were just done in the um, gun metal by Model Air Metallics, so they're not as dark as the recesses in the armour. This is going to help bring out all those other metallic edges, so when we highlight them there's going to be some nice contrast. Now I'm going to use XV88 for all the sigils and scrolls. Um, you could start with Morning Fang Brown, but for this I wanted to start adding little bits, little bits of a yellow tone to the rest of the model in areas, just as complementary colours. Uh, you want to be really careful on that shoulder pad that you uh, don't get any of that on the plaque that you've previously done. I was just using a standard brush but you can quite easily use a uh, Winter Newton instead. After that I start on all the satchels and holsters and that's Panzer Dark Rust. Which is a um, rather warm reddish brown. Again, uh, sticking to that same sort of palette with the warm colours. Alongside the greens, it's the same way. If you do the flesh terror, uh, you want complementary colours. You go for slight greens uh, to complement the red. So it works both ways. Now I'm going to start picking out the scrolls with Zandri dust. Now for this scroll, I start doing the top and the outer edges. Um, eventually, I do fade it into the middle a little bit as well. Um, again, some excellent sculpting by Games Workshop on these models and these sigils on the gun have a lot of flow, so they should be really easy to highlight with just the Zandri dust. And you could leave them there if, if that's what you wish. Now we're going to use Rust by Model Air. Um, lots of different rust colours going, going on here at the moment. Um, decided to do this instead of using the Gorthor Brown that I usually use with the Dryad Bark, just showing you you can do this with different paints and you get slightly different results. Almost an edge highlight there uh, with a glazed thin paint and then it's being feathered and pushed around where it needs to be. Now to go over the Retributor armor we're going to use Reclam Flesh Shade by Games Workshop. Uh, watered down about 50-50, I do want to warm up those uh, yellows a little bit before we highlight them. Give the recesses some warmth and just make that gold look a little bit more regal. This is one of those models, the more you look at it, the, the more you find extra details that you may have missed. And uh, another wash is going to be applied, but this is to all the sigils, and we're going to do that in Agrax Earthshade. 
That's going to separate the two tones now. So we've got a uh, warmish gold with the Reckland and we've got a nice dark, rich um, paper sort of colour. Uh, weathered paper with the Agrax Earth shade. After that, I start doing the actual seal on the sigils and they are started with a base coat of Screamer Pink. I prefer to use Screamer Pink and work up to a, a red rather than just uh, slap a red on and work up from that. Uh, one of the reasons I started with this colour is because he's got a uh, red thing on his chest and I wanted to use colours similar to that but with a different undertone. Now we're going to use Ulfdor Guard Blue by Games Workshop and we're going to put that on all the lenses and there's quite a lot of lenses on this model so be really careful. This is a Winsor Newton double zero, I don't think you need a triple zero for this, a uh, double zero should just be fine. As you can tell I'm holding the brush there at the tip of the brush and using it more like a pin for the detail work rather than doing any big brush strokes. After that, it's Ulthwain Blue, I believe that's how it's pronounced. And we're going to do about half of those lenses, uh, the bottom half. I've also been doing the visor here, and for the visor, we're going to blend these blues into the, the, the center um, where it's the highest, so the light's reflecting from the top and uh, just bouncing off the center of that. It's always best with this um, eye visor to paint from the inside outwards is why it's not been painted red yet. I'm using Wasdaka Red uh, to highlight the edges of this little power box or whatever it is. Because I wanted to mute the edges of the red rather than making it brighter. Uh, if they're dull at the edges where the light hits it makes the armor look more green in comparison. So we got a much brighter green look but we didn't do anything to make it look any brighter than it already was. Uh, we just dulled down the other colors. Next, I'm going to highlight the top of the sigils, about two thirds of it, uh, with Mephiston Red. Uh, just covering, this one has a skull in it, so I'm just covering the top of the skull and the bottom of the eye sockets and the top of the actual seal, uh, wax seal itself. I'm assuming it'd be wax, but it's the far future, it could be made of anything. After that, the only other colour I believe that I put on the lenses is a very thin coat of off-white and we're just putting a, a crescent moon around the inside lenses, uh, the bottom left side of those and we're going to blend a little bit of that off-white really watered down into the blues that we've done on the visor as well. If you can hear banging in the background, I apologise, uh, someone's doing some building all of a sudden. After the off-white, I realised this thing at the bottom here looks like a cable. That's what makes me think this is a battery pack of some kind. Um, so I just did that in Eschen Grey. And when you paint the Eschen Grey next to these other greens, the Eschen Grey actually looks like it has a much, has much more of a, a, a slightly green tone to it. Uh, which is something I'd not noticed before, but it's something I thought I'd take note of uh, for later painting tutorials. Now we're going to go back to the Zandri dust on the sigils. Just picking up the uh, folds and the raised areas now, as the Agrax will have sat in all the shaded areas and added that depth back in for us. Um, yeah, there is actually one on his leg and I do realise I've not put the leg part on with the harness as well. Um, but later on I fixed that off camera and then put it on but all the all the colour techniques are exactly the same now we're going back to um, Rust by Model Air Metallic and we're using that to do the bullet at the very back we're going to do the casing of the bullet and the skull in Rust by Model Air Metallic and we're going to do the actual bullet itself a uh, different colour just to make it stand out And I'm going to use Dawnstone to edge highlight any of the blacks that I feel need edge highlighting, although I don't think you need to do the shoulder pads. I think this is a Winsor Newton double zero again. Just 
triple zero is really only used for doing eyes and face work. And for this model, I did do the eyes in a red, but they don't show up very well on the camera uh, because the face is so dark. Now I'm going to use Model Air Metallic Gold to highlight the shell casing. I'm leaving a bit of the rust just showing underneath it. It's still quite a uh, vibrant colour, even though the name is Rust, so it's not like some Death Guard rust. It's just a uh, off copper sort of colour, a bit more dark. Now for the face, which we re rarely did anything on because it's going to be so black, is we're going to use Decay Black by Scale 75 almost as a wash, it's very very thin, we're going to paint that in reverse, usually we highlight up the eyebrows and everything else but we're going to leave those the base colour and we're going to just paint the shadows in with this very watered down paint and just be careful not to flood the eye sockets and that's going to make the uh, skin a lot blacker than it usually would be and then to highlight all the metallic parts around the edges I'm just going to use Muddle Air Metallic Steel as that's one of my favourite colours for edge highlighting metallics that also includes the holsters on his side, the edge of all the weapons, so if it's metallic that's what it's getting highlighted with, including the insides now of the leg armor uh, which we painted Model M metallic black before. Then all we have to do is give him a gloss varnish, give him a pin wash and give him a matte varnish and he's finished. So that is actually the first thing me and Andy have for the Studio Space Marine Army done. Um, so yeah. So, so far it's this guy versus all Andy's chaos stuff so that'll be quite a fight I do hope you enjoyed that one guys um, I did enjoy painting him I am stuck with doing a getting the painting tutorial done within a three day period and getting the videos out as Andy's working on a commission so uh, trying to go as fast as I can hence the shorter video but yeah, we do hope you like that. We hope you learnt something. Uh, if you did or you've got any questions, hit like, leave a comment and subscribe. And um, we have to give a special thank you to our patrons who uh, actually paid for the Shadow Spear model for us. And that's why you have these tutorials. So we have a special thank you to DWAC, Warren, Love Minis, The Orc Boys, Ludwig Hofbauer, Kit Lindquist, Acmas of Dawn, MTKX11 and Mark... Um, by the way, Mark, if you watch this one, you haven't got back to us on Patreon with your YouTube name, so we can put you properly in that list alongside everybody else. If you could do that, that would be great. And if anyone else um, wants to join us on Patreon, links are in the description. And if you want to get your hands on a Shadow Spear box uh, for a cheaper than retail price, uh, follow the links in our description to the Outpost. That's our affiliate link. We have a big thank you for them to them as well. And... Um, that's all from me. There'll be more Space Marine stuff coming out soon. And thanks for watching, guys.